I've completed the lower portion which is the husk and the main pulley is over here that will have a, a belt to the engine that will drive the uh, line shaft and there are several pulleys in here and none of them uh, yet have belts because I'm going to be adding the second um, blade which will be above this and that will all be tied together. The blade is in here. Um, I've got uh, pretty much everything complete on this first section and uh, you can see on the opposite side the various parts are, are complete. This shaft here is being left extended because that will have be connected to the blower for the sawdust and the other shaft over here will be left also for the carriage drive. Various parts as you can see the NBW's that hold all the pillow blocks on the underside all there and uh, the timber is all stained and grained. Now these lower ones here uh, are simply temporary because they will be removed and I got them there because you can see this lower pulley here which hangs below these so uh, it's just to keep everything up uh, off the ground while while things are being assembled. The frame that's carrying the second saw blade is now complete and um, you can get an idea just exactly how this works. It's been a bit of a complicated process trying to get all the pins and the pulleys in place and lined up but I took my time and um, I did make one goof and I had to take the frame off and reset it. Um, this does happen from time to time with everybody. Um, so what I did is I just removed all the ACC that was on the frame and I refiled the bottom feet here to get the, uh, the correct dimension between the two of them. Uh, this was a little bit tricky. Um, to get the distance between these so what I what I first did is I took and put a pin through here and assembled this unit here which then dimensioned the frame spacing and then slowly uh, once I got that secured I built up the support arms here onto pins in here and then left the pulleys until the very last so that I could visually line them all up and the way I would line things up is I would put a scale rule on the on the underside and visually look through and get the side of each pulley in line with the edge of the scale I found that was the, probably the easiest way to do it, uh, you know, eyeballing it. Um, these two drives, as I said earlier, will now be trimmed uh, later on when the blower and the, the, uh, the carriage go uh, in place uh, and are assembled in the final installation. Um, the only thing that I haven't done, and I probably should have done sooner, is I should have finished the blades. Uh, they'll be a little bit tricky to do at this stage, but uh, I'll be airbrushing those with some rust and I'll lightly polish the edge with some steel wool to bring that back up again and um, that'll uh, work out nicely. And the shiny part will be the part that uh, is actually uh, cutting wood because it'll be kept clean. And uh, the next step uh, that I'll do now is put the belts on and I'm going to try a different product this time and uh, when I get the belts on and then we'll do some um, 
additional weathering on here. I'll use some chalks and stains to give a bit of a rust, a little bit more character, and to bring some of the detail out as well. The next um, piece of equipment we're going to build is going to be the carriage hardware. And uh, again, you can see all the various castings very nicely cast. These are actually wheels that ride on the on the rails. They got a tiny flange on them. Uh, you can see from the dime the size of these and uh, pillow blocks for the axles and so on. And uh, so this will be an interesting uh, model to build uh, next. I'm not going to repeat the same things with every uh, kit here. Um, it'd be too repetitive. The castings. Uh, will be blackened, rinsed, and brushed uh, as we've done previously. The lumber will be prepared the same way. Um, of course, it's all been pre-prepared, but I'm, uh, the cutting and uh, and um, assembling of the various wood pieces. I will show just um, stages along the way uh, as it's completed with the final completion, and uh, we'll go from there. The instructions call for removing the printed templates at the back of the catalog. Now, I'm not one who favors losing the original drawings of anything. So what I'll do is I'll take these and I will photocopy each of these templates and then I'll use them and save the manual with all the originals. That way if I damage or destroy in, in any way the, uh, the templates that uh, uh, are here, um, it won't be the original. And uh, so that way I keep my, uh, my original catalog. In the last few models that I built that have required a leather belt going from a flywheel from a steam engine like the twin cylinder steam engine I just built to the line shaft in a building to drive all the various engines. I've always used a product called drafting vellum. Drafting vellum comes in sheets. This is a sheet that 24 by 36 that uh, I happen to have, several of. And it has a matte finish on both sides. Being drafting vellum, it has to be stable so the dimensions on the drawing don't change. And so it's very, very strong, very stable, it doesn't tear. It ta because of this matte finish on each side, it takes paint extremely well because it has a bit of a tooth. And it is flexible, so when I cut it into strips, I can easily put it around the various pulleys and glue it in place. Now, recently, a couple of friends, have, and as well as Sierra West, I've mentioned using a product called Tyvek. And Tyvek typically is an exterior sheathing that is applied to the exterior walls of buildings uh, for weatherproofing. I think, I haven't got a sample, but I think it's a little heavier than the product that I've just uh, found in my office. And it's an envelope from FedEx. This product is very, very strong. It, it won't take a lot to try and make it tear. Um, it's very, very thin and I think it's very, very stable. It's not going to, because of its properties that are very similar to Mylar, I don't think it's going to uh, uh, tear easily uh, on a belt, and this is one of the problems with the early models that just used uh, bond paper. Uh, you just tap it and of course it just snaps. So I'll do a little testing on this first before I actually use it to make sure that th that doesn't happen. And if it's successful, then this will be a product that I think I'm gonna experiment with on the rest of these engines on the sawmill, and we'll see how that one goes. I've wiped these pieces down with Dr. Ben's aged driftwood, which I mentioned earlier, and then I just took a knife and I just lightly scraped a couple of deep grooves in there, and then I used the, the gray weathering mix from Hunter Lime, and just brushed a film over that and that runs into it runs into the deep grooves and just so it highlights the the cracks that was the preparation for these strips of wood that go in here then what I do is I take this photocopy that I mentioned before 
and I've glued wood stops on the three sides so that I can place these pieces in like so with the, the, the good grain side up and I'll place those all in there and then I'll put the planking over that that it calls for on the side here and I'll make up this little assembly next. I like to use post-its and you're familiar with the post-it, it's a little pad of paper and I use them to put the yellow glue on, put a weight on just to hold it in place because after a few minutes when I'm done with it I take the top sheet off and I dispose of it and then I use a, a, a toothpick and I will take the toothpick and I'll put each of these joists in place according to the drawing against the stop on the side and I'll put the second stop on the other side I just put some glue on two, two drops place it beside it and locate and what that does is just holds everything in place um, while I go to the next step to put the planking across there and then when I'm done that I'll just put a couple of weights on that just to hold that all in place until the glue dries. Now I could I could use the square as I'm doing each one to make sure that this is square but this is not fitting anything else and I'm right on the line so it's 99.9 percent .9 square and I'm quite satisfied with that and we just push those up and now we can put in the planks across the top just to hold that all together and then we finish it off. Earlier I said that uh, when I finished cutting the strip wood I true the end up so sometimes these are slightly off so what I'll do is just on the square edge there I'll just feed it in just tap it and I have a nice square end. One of my favorite tools is a standard emery board and these come with a fine side and a coarse side and even though I true these up there's always a tiny little burr on there and so I'll just I'll just break that corner slightly and I'll get rid of that burr on the on the end and we get a little bit of a bev tiny tiny bevel that uh, really is uh, imperceptible and uh, this uh, is also uh, a good tool to do any filing that uh, especially on wood that uh, a metal file won't do and now what we can do is we can we can place this you know, on the model matching the pattern below it and that'll hold all these pieces together so after we can just lift that whole thing off using this template here that I set up I've assembled this is the underside I've assembled the the, the frame and the pillow blocks are all in place axles and wheels and I'm using this um, as the 46 inch carriage by 22 and these wheels here uh, are fluted and these are flat and they will ride on a rail on the opposite side I've got the planking in here and I've installed the um, knee guides and knees these are the knees and the knee guides on the side and in order to keep them aligned there is a rod going through there so what I've done is I've put the rod through there first and then glued them the guides on each side individually um, with this rod through there and then I've installed the knees and they ride on guides and you can see they're loose so that I can adjust these later on when I when I decide on a um, on a, uh, a log diameter because the log diameter will determine where these actually sit. So for now, they sit in guides and they're all loose and uh, adjustable. 